Great Wall of India, massive structure that surrounds ancient fort of Kamalgar. This massive structure is called the Great Wall of India and it surrounds the ancient fort of Kamalgar. Kamalgar, the second most important fort of Rajasthan after Chittorgarh, is located in Rajasthan in western India. It is a World Heritage Site that was originally built in the 15th century by Rana Kama, ruler of Mu War between 1433 and 1468 AD. The massive wall at Kamalgar took nearly a century to construct and made the fort virtually impenetrable. Located at a distance of 64 kilometers from Udaipur in Rajasman district, Kamalgar fort is easily accessible from the city of Udaipur. This fortress is naturally encircled by Aravelli Ranges, line of peaks, dash 13 elevated mountain peaks, of mountains in western India running approximately 692 km in a northeastern direction across Indian states of Gujarat, Rajasthan, Haryana, and Delhi. Kamalgar Fort was built by Maharana Rana Kama, the ruler of Muwar a state in the western India between 1433 AD and 1468 AD. According to popular folklore, Maharana Kama used to burn massive lamps that consumed 50 kilograms of ghee, a special butter that originated in ancient India, and 100 kilograms of cotton to provide light for the farmers who worked during the nights in the valley. Great Wall of India the fort is constructed on the topmost ridges around 1,914 meters above sea level. The fortifications of the fort extend to the length of 36 kilometers and this fact has made this fort to be in the international records. It is stated to be the second longest wall in the world, after the Great Wall of China. The huge complex of the fort has numerous palaces, temples and gardens making it more magnificent. The impregnable Kamalgar fort has seven massive gates, seven ramparts folded with one another with designed walls toughened by curved bastions and huge watchtowers. The hefty walls of the fort are broad enough to stand eight horses side by side. There are not less than 360 temples inside the complex of the fort and among them beautiful Shiva temple. The strong structure and solid foundation of the fort made it safe during the time of battles and unbeatable until the present. Yet, despite its magnificence it is still little known to the outside world.
niches with six figures cut in rock discovered at Gebel al Sosala, Aswan. Archaeologists discovered two niches with six figures cut in rock inside two New Kingdom chapels in the Gebel al Sosala area, Egypt's largest sandstone quarries located to the north of Aswan. The discovery was made during a survey carried out by a Swedish archaeological mission from Lund University inside two New Kingdom Egyptian chapels named Chapel 30 and 31. The Gebel al Sosala area was completely covered with sand and block ever since it was hit with a destructive earthquake in antiquity. Erosion elements have also impacted the area and its monuments. The rock hewn figures were discovered despite Argentine Egyptologist Ricardo Caimano's describing Chapel 30 as completely destroyed, informed Minister of Antiquities Mamdou El Damati. Mahmoud Afafi, the head of the ancient Egyptian Antiquities Department, told Akram Online that the first niche was found at the end of Chapel 30 and bears two figures depicting the chapel's owner and his wife sitting on a chair. The man is wearing a shoulder-length wig and is assuming the Osirian posture where his arms are crossed on his chest. The woman is putting her left arm on the shoulder of her husband while her right hand is on her chest. The second niche was found in Chapel 31 and includes four figures. The first depicts the owner of the chapel Neferkyu, who was the overseer of foreign lands during the reign of King Tuthmos III. The second figure is of his wife Ruisti, while the third and fourth are of his son and daughter. The Swedish mission has been working in Gebel al Sosala's 32 chapels since 2012. The most well preserved is Chapel 31 as it still holds its complete architectural elements. Gebel al Sosala, Chain of Mountains was known in ancient times as Kini, meaning the Palace of Rowing, and extends from Kamambo to Edfu where the river Nile narrows and high sandstone cliffs come down right to the water's edge. The area was used as a quarry site since at least the 18th dynasty up to the Greco-Roman era. Ancient Egyptians had carved small shrines into the cliffs, dedicating them to a variety of Nile deities and to the river itself. Smaller shrines were cut by King Thotmos I, Hatshepsut and Thotmos III, while Hormhab had constructed a rock-cut temple where many kings of the 19th dynasty or later left their mark in some way. Gebel al Sosala became an important cult center, and each year at the beginning of the season of inundation, offerings and sacrifices were made to the gods associated with the Nile to ensure the country's well-being for the coming year. Kingdom became a serious threat to Assyria. Arjishti also founded the city of Arjishti Hanili in 776 BC and the city of Arabuni, now known as the city of Yerevan. One of inscriptions is covered with text. By the greatness of the god Kalde, Arjishti son of Menuel built this great fortress, named it Arabuni, to the power of the Anili and the terror of its enemies. Arjishti says, the land was waste, I undertook here great works. Translation of the cuneiform inscription, under the authority of Kalde, God, I, Arjishti, the son of Menwe erected this stronghold and named it Arabuni to the glory of the country of Bayana and to intimidate its enemies, X, photo credit, Evgeny Genkin. The findings of Polish archaeologists are evidence of the fighting and cruelty, among them is a skeleton of about 30 years old woman, whose head was cut off, and of another person with a split skull. We believe that both of them were killed during the attack on the city, added Dr. Yakubiak. The discovered remains were not buried in the tombs, only randomly scattered among the buildings of the so-called lower town. Metzimer was a very important archaeological site. It is essentially a Bronze Age city of the 3rd and 2nd millennia BC, when copper mining took place on a major scale, and it was a major source of bronze production. However it continued to be a major site in the Eurasian period, 9th to 6th centuries BC, and it was even occupied in the Middle Ages. Photo credits, Andrew Selkirk. What drew the attention of researchers was a small amount of finds in the form of historical objects which may illustrate the scale of predatory Urartu invasion. The invaders did not spare the holy shrines. Archaeologists found a small, oval urban sanctuary, 
which had been looted during the invasion. Inside, on stone platforms, they discovered broken pottery and one vessel preserved in its entirety, made of stone. Metzimer is a protected archaeological reserve. Excavations within the reserve have been conducted for almost 50 years. Previous studies have shown that during the heyday from the 4th to the 2nd millennium BC, the settlement occupied more than 10 hectares and was surrounded by monumental walls. In the early days of Iron Period, from the 11th to the 9th century, Metzimer had expanded to nearly 100 acres. The city grew rich on the copper that was quarried and smelted there, and on the magic rock nearby that is covered with mysterious rock carvings. The central part of the fortress Arabuni was surrounded by temple complexes with seven shrines. At that time, it was one of the most important political and cultural centers in the Aras Valley. From the 8th century BC, Metzimer became part of the Kingdom of Urartu. The place was continuously inhabited until the 17th century, 